WorldMag.com presents Marvin Olasky, editor-in-chief of World Magazine and author of more than 20 books. Voluntary associations rely on what people really want to do, rather than a government ordering what people have to do. In this interview, Marvin Olasky takes a look at the decade ahead by first looking back at some key events in American history. Uh, Dr. Olasky, you start off the article asking, where are we going? And before answering that, you kind of look back at where we've come. What are, what are some key events that, that you think are important to consider from our past? Well, certainly the, the American Revolution and the time of the founding. I'm glad that Republicans in Washington are now citing the Constitution and, uh, and, and noting that legislation should have some basis in the Constitution. Uh, that was a terrific period of American life with a, with a brilliant group of, uh, of, uh, of individuals. Uh, coming together. There was another period in the 1830s when there was an enormous expansion in the United States of uh, associations, voluntary act activities, groups of like-minded citizens with a common purpose who wanted to bring about advance not through government power and they knew the limitations on market forces, but they really emphasized voluntary participation. And there was a brilliant French observer who came to the United States in the 1830s, Alexis de Tocqueville, and he wrote about that. And uh, coming from France, he was enormously impressed that uh, to see the role of American churches uh, and of civic, fraternal, and educational organizations that created and financed all kinds of non-compulsory offerings that made for a better world, or at least a better American society. You describe the relationship in these past decades between big government and big business kind of like a seesaw. Um, why, why do you describe it that way, and, and has it changed? Well, uh, a seesaw that they, they do tend to, uh, or they tended to, to battle against each other in some ways. Um, it's changed in that uh, very often now uh, some big companies are very much in favor of big government uh, as long as they can manipulate the laws and regulations to work to their advantage. I... I spent five years from 1978 to 1983 learning about this. I was working with the DuPont company. Uh, DuPont in Delaware put out great products, and I esteemed the engineers and the scientists who worked there. But often in governmental affairs, the idea was not to try to shrink the size of government. There was already gargantuan at that time, but uh, the folks were perfectly happy to grow it as long as the regs would, could be written to work to the advantage of the the biggest company in the industry. In this case, in the chemical industry, it was DuPont. In other industries, like automobiles, it was General Motors. And look what happened to the auto industry when companies, instead of working on competing and coming up with better products, started to work on manipulating the rules to their advantage. All right. You've commented on how um, we're coming out of an era um, on which, during which the big government, you write, uh, quote, hitched a ride on compassionate conservatism and stole the truck during the Obama-Pelosi regime. So, so that's big government. And then in big business, uh, you talk about the dot-com bubble and, and bailouts and how these are kind of causing some discontent with Americans in their 20s and 30s. So this is kind of where we're coming from. Where are we going? Well, we're, we're certainly seeing the, a distrust of institutions and... Uh, a trust and sometimes idolization of individuals. The, um, at least among, among a lot of uh, Christians uh, your age that I, that I know, Tiffany, there's, there's disillusionment, uh, but there are particular role models who are very much followed. Uh, Bono, for example, uh, from U2, uh, or Angelina, Angelina Jolie from, from Hollywood, uh, uh, or at least in 2008, Barack Obama. The uh, it, was, it was very emotional, the, the way lots of people flowed, people in their 20s flowed to Obama back, uh, back a couple of years ago. Uh, there were Camp Obamas that trained multitudes of election volunteers, and the, the emphasis was on, was on a cult of personality. So we're, we're very susceptible. I mean, old people, but also young people, are very susceptible to, uh, as, as we lose confidence in institutions, to putting our trust in princes, whether they're uh, Bono or, or Obama or someone else. All right, so with the past election and um, even with the, the Tea Party, um, there seems kind of just writing a little bit about the, 
the culture, the cult of personality. Um, if what's next? What's beyond um, this, and how will it affect uh, how we move forward in politics? How how can we best move on um, from a history, a cultural history like this? I think we've seen. Uh, we saw this in the 1960s, 1980s, and this recent decade, both big government and big business coming up short. We saw in decades like the 70s and the 90s, a lot of people, conservatives especially, but, but others also, returning to uh, Alexis de Tocqueville's observations about the ways that voluntary associations mm -hmm. encourage people to build community without building government structures. Those. Those, the big government always seems to descend into command and control regulation. Voluntary associations are sometimes harder to put together, but they work better, they're longer lasting, because they rely on what people really want to do, not just what people are ordered to do, and will do reluctantly for a short time, if you're watching them carefully, but will stop doing as soon as possible. So there's a lot we can learn from uh, what Christians did in the 19th century in building voluntary institutions. All right, so how can citizens transition out of a culture of the cult of personality or the the mass cheerleading squads and how can we do better? Well if you go back to the 1960s and then you go back to the last couple of years we have uh, had enormous expansions of government uh, often with big business uh, in cahoots with big government so these two forces do not act as counterweights to each other anymore there are things we can learn from uh, other decades when conservatives and other people who were not enamored of government expansion saw that just emphasizing the individual against government does not really cut it because people want to be able to work with others in some ways to accomplish some common uh, goals. So here we come back to Alexis de Tocqueville from the 1830s. Voluntary associations encouraging people to build community without building government structures because those government structures always seem to descend into command and control regulation. We need to figure out a way we can work together without having it be a government bureaucracy. And the solution, I think, for the future is the solution uh, of the past, namely voluntary associations, churches, other Christian groups, and civic associations and some groups from other religions, but being able to work together on some common goals. Now you comment on historical patterns that this has happened in the past. Do you, do you anticipate this happening again anytime soon? Well, God's the author of our history, our present, and our future. So I don't know. I try to steer away from predictions, uh, except that if we turn away from God, we're in trouble. One thing is certain, that once again we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And the good news there amid these challenges that God has prepared for us, a table laden with food. And we can look forward to that. We can trust in God's mercy in the present. And we can remember that this world is a classroom for us in which we can learn a lot about God and about ourselves. And it's a theater in which God's grace is daily demonstrated. Thank you for listening to a Marvin Olasky podcast presented by worldmag.com, the online home of World Magazine. 